welcome. Today we're going to talk about order of operations. In order to understand the order of operations, it's a good idea to understand the directions. You will be asked to simplify an expression or to an evaluate an expression. Now the words simplify and evaluate, they basically mean the same thing. The only difference is that one of them has is for a numerical expression, meaning an expression. Remember, expressions are math operations that do not have equal signs. Numerical expression is an expression that just has numbers in it. To evaluate, you evaluate algebraic expressions, and algebraic expressions have variables in them, and you know the value of the variable, so you just replace the variable. So the word simplify in this case, it's used like crazy in math, but for today, simplify basically just means to condense or shorten so that all like terms have been combined. In this case, when we're talking about numerical expressions, all numbers are like terms. So what we're just going to say here is we are going to perform all possible operations. And later, we will talk about exactly what it means when I say combine like terms. So here we're just going to perform all possible operations. Now evaluate. Let's take a look at evaluate. Evaluate also just means to simplify, but in this case you're going to have variables and you'll be told what the variables represent. So what we're going to do here is we simply replace the variables. So replace variables. with numbers and perform indicated operations. Or I'll even just say and perform all operations. Which again, we just learned operations, performing all operations is really the same as just simplify. So you basically, you're just going to keep going until you can't go any longer. Now the order of this is important. You do have to go in a separate or in an exact order. Now the order is referred to as the order of operations. Now you may have heard of an acronym, either PEMDAS, GEMDAS, or GAMA. So I'm going to write that over here on the left. It could be PEMDAS, you could also, instead of having a P there, you could put a G, but also in high school, they sometimes refer to as GAMA. So what that is, is just helps you remember the order in which you go. So the P or the G stands for parentheses or grouping symbols. I'm going to refer to the first step as grouping symbols. So the first thing that you have to do is the stuff inside the grouping symbols. Now the reason I'm not using parentheses here is because parentheses is just one set of grouping symbols. So on the top here, I'm just gonna, let's write down what all our grouping symbols are. We've got parentheses, we have brackets, we also have absolute value symbols. Those also act as grouping symbols. Remember the absolute value of a number is always its distance from zero. So the absolute value of say negative two is two. The absolute value of two is also two. So absolute value, once you find the absolute value of a number, it's always positive. We also have been learning about our radicals. So we're gonna be dealing with square roots. We're gonna be dealing with cube roots. There are fourth roots and fifth roots, but you'll get into that stuff a lot later. We also have fraction bars. So fraction bars, I'm gonna write fraction bar. But a fraction bar basically is just telling you to divide. And what it does is it tells you to do everything on the top, then everything on the bottom, and then completely divide. So once you've dealt with your fraction, with your grouping symbols, the next thing we do is exponents. And if you look right here, that's what the E stands for we do our exponents. Then after we've done all of our grouping symbols and all of our exponents, the next thing that we do is our multiplication and division. So in the PEMDAS, the M and the D are there, but 
in JAMA, just the M is there. And what that stands for is multiplication and division. So what you do is multiplication and division in the order in which it comes in the problem. So you don't always do the multiplication first. If the division comes first, you do the multiplication before the division. So the next step is to do all the multiplication and division in the order that it comes. And then the last is the addition and subtraction. And notice here in JAMA, it's just A. The A just stands for addition and subtraction. So you would also do the addition and the subtraction in the order in which it comes in. So that's why I separated the bubbles and I put the arrows because it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter what order you go in, but you could do subtraction before addition. You could do division before multiplication. So let's go ahead and try a few. All right, so when you go ahead and you do number one, it's important that we are going to work down in a V shape. Now, notice you have a fraction bar here. You also have some parentheses, and you also have some absolute value symbols. So when you're doing a fraction bar, you want to work, or you can work on the top and the bottom at the same time. So looking at the top, the first thing that I want to take care of on the top is the stuff inside the absolute value symbol. So I'm first going to deal with 3 minus 7. Also at the same time, I can deal with the 18 divided by 3. So now when I do this, I'm going to draw my fraction bar. And the 3 next to the absolute value symbol just means I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to do 3 times the absolute value of whatever 3 minus 7 is, which is negative 4, plus the absolute value of whatever 18 divided by 3 is, which is 6. Now, on the bottom, I can also do my first step on the bottom. And the first step on the bottom is to do the 10 minus 8, because that's inside my grouping symbols. So I'm going to have 2 to the 4th, and then that's going to be times 10 minus 8, which is 2. So then after that, we're still not completely finished with our grouping symbols because we have to do the absolute values. So the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. So on the top of my fraction bar, I'm going to have 3 times 4 plus the absolute value of 6 is 6. So we're going to have 3 times 4 plus 6 on the top. On the bottom, you want to do your exponents before you do your multiplication. So you're going to do 2 to the 4th, which means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times another 2 is 16. So that is 16 times 2. Now continuing on, notice I'm working down in this V shape, right? Continuing on, I'm now going to go back to the top of my fraction bar and I'm going to do the multiplication before I do the addition. So I'm going to have 12 plus 6 and then on the bottom of my fraction bar, go ahead and do 16 times 2, which is going to be 32. So then back to the top of my fraction bar, 12 plus 6 is 18. And I've kind of run out of room, so I'm going to go over to the right-hand side, and I'm going to get 18 over 32. Now, that right there is a fraction, 18 over 32. I don't want you to change it to a decimal. I want you to look at that like it's a fraction. So we're actually going to reduce that fraction, 18 over 32. Both 18 and 32 are divisible by 2, so that's going to give me 9 sixteenths. And that's your answer right there. So now notice I took, I did one step at a time, but I'm also, if I can do more than one step, like if there's two, more than one set of grouping symbols, go ahead and do those first. I also want you to work down. And when you have a fraction bar, I want you to keep it as a fraction. Because if we had separated it, you would have ended up with 18 divided by 32. And you you might not have recognized that the answer was a fraction. So we are really going to be working with fractions. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Now, this next one I'm hoping looks a lot simpler than the first one. So for this one, I would like you to stop the video and give it a try. Work one step at a time and work your way down and then come back to the video to see if you've done it correctly. So if you did this one correctly, you should have gotten one as your answer. So look at how I worked down and in a V shape. The first thing I did was I did what was inside the grouping symbols. That's where I got the five. Then I did my exponents. So I did five squared. That's where 25 came from. 
Then I did my multiplication and division in the order in which it came. So I did multiplication to get 3 times 25 is 75. Then I did my division. 75 divided by 5 is 15. Then I did 16 minus 15 to get 1. So now this next one, notice, has cube roots and square roots in them. Now, the cube root symbol and the square root symbols, those are you treat them somewhat like parentheses. If there are operations inside them, you need to do that first. So if you look at the first part, the cube root of 216, then you have minus 27, then you have plus the square root of 5 cubed minus 2 squared. What you should do first here is what is inside that square root symbol because there's more than one thing going on inside that square root symbol. So the first thing I'm going to do is what is inside here. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to just start by rewriting. I'm talking about the cube root of 216. Now notice however long your cube root symbol or your square root symbol is. If you notice, this stops right here. So the only thing you're finding the cube root of is the 216. So that minus 27 is not inside the cube root symbol. Then we've got the square root, so we're adding the square root of 5 cubed, which is 125, minus 2 squared, which is 4. So now notice how long my square root symbol is all of that stuff is still inside there. So we're going to continue. 125 minus 4 is 121. So that's going to give me the square root of 121 there. Now I'm just going to bring everything else down. So I've got the cube root of 216 minus 27 plus the square root of 121. Now I can find the cube roots and the square roots, right? So the cube root of 216, hoping you have this memorized or you're working on it, is 6. Then we've got minus 27 plus the square root of 121 is 11. So now all we have left is addition and subtraction, so just go in order from left to right. So we've got 6 minus 27 is negative 21, and negative 21 plus 11 is negative 10. Now the next set of problems are asking you to evaluate the expressions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to replace all of my letters with numbers. And I don't want you to do any of the operations until you have just basically rewritten the entire problem with the letters replaced with your numbers. So notice we've started with brackets and the first variable is m and m is a fraction. So you want to make your brackets big enough now that you can fit in that fraction negative two-thirds. So always be thinking ahead. Then you have a set of parentheses and then we have negative y. Well y is 8 so I'm going to write negative 8 plus w. w is negative 2. That's inside parentheses you're going to close your brackets, and then you're going to square it. So now at this point, I want you to stop the video, and I want you to see if you can try that problem on your own and come back to see if you've done it correctly. So if you did this correctly, you should have gotten 400 over 9 or 44 and 4 ninths. And if you leave your answer as an improper fraction, that's okay. So if you take a look, I did what was inside my parentheses first. So I had like double brackets. So you do what's inside the brackets first, which would be the parentheses. I got negative 10. And then I knew I was multiplying negative 10 by a fraction. So what I did is I just put a time sign here and I reminded myself negative 10 is just the same as negative 10 over 1. I could not do any cross canceling, so I just multiplied straight across. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. That's how I got 20 over 3. And then I'm doing 20 over 3 squared, which basically means I'm doing 20 over 3 times 20 over 3, which is really just 20 times 20 and 3 times 3, which is how I got 400 over 9. So let's try number 5. What I want you to do is practice replacing your variables with your numbers and stop the video and then come back when you're done to just make sure that you've done it correctly. You don't have to do the whole problem, just get the first step done. So it should like look like this if you've replaced your variables correctly. Now I want to remind you this is a, this is going to end up being kind of a complex fraction. So 
we want to do everything on the top and everything on the bottom and then simplify it from there. So now let's looking at the top, we have the absolute value of negative two thirds minus one half. So we have to do negative two thirds minus one half first. So remember when we're subtracting fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So our common denominator is going to be six. So that would mean negative two thirds would change to negative four six and negative one half would change to three over six. Now we're doing the absolute value of that. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a look at the bottom and I notice that I have to find the absolute value of negative two, which is just two. So that's gonna give me eight plus two. And then that absolute value symbol will go away. Now looking at the top, now I'm gonna do the inside of the absolute value symbol, which is negative four, six minus three, six. So basically I'm gonna do negative four minus three to get negative seven, six. So I'm gonna bring that back up here. So I'm gonna have negative six, seven, six, but I want the absolute value of that over eight plus two, which is 10. Now the absolute value of negative seven, six is positive seven, six. So I have seven, six over 10. Now that's a complex fraction, which means I'm now gonna do seven, six divided by 10 over one, which you could have already said is the same as multiplying by one over 10. So I'm gonna have seven, six times one over 10. And now there's no cross canceling that can happen here. So I just multiply straight across and I get seven sixtieths. So now here are two more problems. I would like you to stop the video and try them both on your own and come back to check to see if you've done your answers, your problems correctly. So if you got 78 for number six and you got 200 for number seven, you are ready to move on to concept seven. If you haven't gotten these, let's take a look at the work and see if you can figure out where you went wrong. A common mistake that people make with the cube roots and square root problems is that they accidentally extend the bar of your cube root or your square root. Notice that that little bar up there only goes over the a. So the only thing I'm finding the square, the cube root of is the 27, which does give me three. Now, because there was a negative sign in front of it, that represents negative three. Nine squared is 81, negative three plus 81 does give me 78. In the next one, in the next one, you have to do what's inside this. Now notice the length of your bar here is going over the entire thing. So you have to do what's inside this first. So you have seven minus 27, which gives you negative 20. Now those parentheses can't go away yet because you're squaring the negative 20. Remember a negative times a negative is a positive. So you get 400. Then you're finding the square root of 400, which is 20. And because the 10 is right next to the square root symbol, that means multiplication and you get 200. So that's concept six. You can now move on to concept seven.